Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, Blitz Chess postmortem video. This is a postmortem of my Blitz Chess game number 40 where I played the uh, English opening. And so let's take a look at that with the opening book. C4 is the English opening. One of the top four moves. Um, I was looking at some of the other responses. My opponent played E5, but um, you can also play Knight F6, maybe the most common move here. Uh, E6 or uh, C5 going into a symmetrical position. But he chose e5, and this is the uh, reverse Sicilian. So you can imagine if uh, <clears throat> if white had played uh, e4 and black had played c5, then that would be a Sicilian. So this is just a Sicilian with the colors reversed. And you can play uh, some of the same lines, although uh, the difference of uh, black being a move behind uh, uh, has an effect, and, and so you can't just automatically play your, your normal Sicilian moves. Um, but but a lot of them are still valid. So um, continues with knight c3. I continue with knight c3. I'm just trying to uh, control this these light squares here, and the pawn helps do that. And also I'm going to play uh, bishop uh, uh, to g2. You know, g3 first, and then bishop to g2. But uh, he immediately challenges my plan. So I've sort of signaled what I'm going to do by playing g3 here. Um, and uh, so black immediately challenges with d5, which is still you see is still a popular move here, and um, place my bishop where I intended. And then at this point, uh, my opponent makes the first kind of unusual move. He plays knight takes c3. So more common is just to retreat the knight. It's under attack from two pieces and uh, has to be either defended or retreat. Um, when when black takes the knight, it helps white by uh, bringing a pawn to the center and uh, it eliminates uh, black's only developed piece. So uh, all in all, this is probably a decent opening for white at this point. But actually, I make a mistake almost right away, which is this move d4. So the computer thinks um, best way to proceed here would be moves like um, knight f3, queen c2, and uh, castles. And uh, you know things would be pretty good. White has a very harmonious setup here, and the bishop and the queen are cooperating on the light squares. So uh, <clears throat> that would be fine. The rook can come to this open file. Instead, I played d4 right away, reasoning that uh, you know he had strengthened my center by bringing a pawn here, um, so I should take advantage of that. And uh, that might be a good idea in general, but it's all about the details. So after e takes, c takes, he has this move bishop b4 check. And uh, this is a little bit awkward. I, I can't interpose with my bishop or I just lose the pawn. So if I play the bishop here, uh, sorry, his queen takes and also defends his bishop. So uh, that leaves me with no, no good options here except to play uh, king f1, which is actually, uh, even the computer agrees, it's the best move under the circumstances. But now black has a slight edge. And uh, so black is doing well instead of white. Um, but we continue developing, and it's all okay up until uh, about this point. So I have this idea of uh, maybe developing. Um, my king is, is blocking the na normal development of the rook, so I was thinking, well, I push h4, h5, maybe even h6, and uh, just uh, develop the rook along the h file. <coughs> um, but it turns out not to be necessary because of the way my opponent plays. He plays the move uh, knight d5 here. And actually, this uh, followed with the next move. I mean, the problem with knight d5 is it's just not stable there. I can kick in immediately, and it doesn't have any great squares to go to. So uh, that's the kind of thing you should check before making a move like that. Make sure you're not getting booted right away, or if you are, that you have a, a good square to go to that improves your position, not, not makes it worse or loses time. Going back is just losing time. And uh, my opponent follows up with bishop takes f3, which is uh, another um, not very good move. Um, basically, he's getting rid of uh, his good bishop for this knight. Um, helps me get a piece out, gives my king a square to go to, and uh, now his knight has to retreat. And um, so the advantage is switched here, and, and white has a pretty strong advantage at this point just because of uh, those two two moves from black. So the game continues. I get my king to a safe square, and uh, he plays his bishop there. And we, we all... Uh, make sort of logical moves here. I'm just trying to solidify my advantage in the center and threaten on bishop takes f6. And uh, he plays queen d6 here to protect it. 
And uh, so I bring my queen in to, I'm thinking about, well, maybe taking and taking and doubling his pawns, but I'm not really sure I want to do that because that would leave uh, a bit of an awkward situation here. Um, but he undefends the knight here. And uh, right now the computer thinks that uh, bishop takes f6 is a good move. So this was, uh, this would be, uh, well, you just have to calculate uh, carefully before you play a move like that. I was a little reluctant to play it because if you look at his... Uh, Queen and his bishop, they're lined up on this pawn. So what you have to check is uh, something like this. You take, and then he can throw in the check first, and your king can run to the square h3. And what's important about this position is the queen can't get to any of these squares um, that would allow another check on the king. So this h3 square is actually just perfectly safe. <laughs> And uh, the bishop is protected by the queen. The pawn is protected by the king. The black bishop and uh, queen are on these dark squares and have uh, dominance of those dark squares, but there's not much they can do from there. So um, the best thing black has here is actually just taking taking that bishop. And notice that everything is protected. The bishop is protecting the rook. The queen is protecting the bishop. And the uh, computer suggests I just move my rook here with the idea of swinging it over and, and starting a tremendous attack on um, Black's king, which has become somewhat exposed because of this trade. So that would have been the best way to play here. It's kind of an interesting interesting line. Uh, I didn't want to go there because <laughs> I, I didn't uh, calculate what was going to happen after queen takes f2 here. I just thought it looked bad. So that's uh, laziness can get you in trouble sometimes. But I had a good move in bishop d4, so I'm still... Okay, this stops the uh, attack along this diagonal. The queen retreats, and then I chose to take the bishop. The computer still likes bishop takes knight here with the idea of, uh, after queen takes, trading queens and doubling the pawns. But this is a situation where it's not quite as clear. Um, the bishops are of opposite color. If the rooks come off, um, there's some possibilities for black to draw. So I'd rather keep the pieces on in a case like this. So I play... Bishop here, and um, I still have a decent position. I still have a slight edge. Um, I give it away somewhere along here. Ah, right here. It's my move, and uh, White's just grabbed a pawn, and he's hitting this rook. But I can take this pawn on b7, and uh, I would just have two rooks and a bishop against two rooks on a knight, but I have this extra pawn here. And with the rooks, it's actually um, a lot easier to get this pawn to pass and that make it into a passed pawn. It is a passed pawn and make it into a queen. And notice the bishop is uh, controlling the queening square if this uh, knight ever moves. So black's pieces are a little bit locked up and after uh, rook takes b7 here, I'd have a great game. Um, and excellent winning chances. But I went for this trade and now um, this is a rook end game where I only have a one pawn advantage and uh, it's actually maybe a draw <laughs> if best if with best play, um, although I can't say uh, what exactly uh, Black did wrong here. It's one of those positions, uh, it's hard to analyze with a computer because the computer doesn't look deep enough. It, it uh, doesn't doesn't find everything because you really need to, to search all the way down to the end to figure out what's going on. Um, but anyway, I have the advantage. So even if it's a, a technical draw, um, you know, I'm still going to play on because uh, I have the extra pawn and I have, it's uh, way over here. Um, you know, one idea is um, if he wins this pawn, he brings his king over here and actually wins this pawn, and uh, we trade rooks, we could end up in a king and pawn ending where my king is just in a better position, where his king is offside and my king can just come and uh, gobble up these uh, pawns over here on the on the king's side and, and win with an extra pawn. So, uh, so there are a lot of different ways to win this. Let's, let's show, let's take a look at how it went down. Uh, he attacks my pawn immediately, which is a good idea, and um, I defend it from the side. This is the only way. If we back up, um, it is also possible for black to attack the pawn from the side, and then if I advance it to get in behind the pawn, and that might be a better a better way to do it. So the way it goes, uh, when my rook is defending on the side, I have some freedom of movement. So as black's king uh, comes in, I can use my rook to cut it off. I place my rook here, and this sets up a wall. Um, 
where uh, Black's king really cannot cannot cross that wall, and that leaves me free to uh, bring my king over and help this pawn go forward. So the game continues here, and uh, he's pushing his pawns forward and hoping to get some counterplay with his king. And uh, here, I think uh, in a position like this where every move counts, it's probably better. I couldn't play a4 in one go because of uh, his rook would just take it, so I played a3. But um, if I had played my king to a3, for king to b3 first, then I could play pawn to a4 in one go, and uh, that would have been faster. Um, although after king b3, he can check. Let's see, how does this go? And, um, well, I could go here and then there. Yeah, and no, I think it would still work out okay. Um, but I pushed the pawn first, so this uh, loses me a tempo in effect, and you'll see why this tempos do matter in the end game. And you'll see why in just uh, just a minute. So right here, um, Black has the idea. This was probably a mistake. His best way to defend was probably to retreat along here, maybe try and check my king, that kind of thing. Going here and trying to exchange rooks, even though his king is in a good position, my pawn is closer to uh, making a queen. And uh, the reason it's closer is because uh, after the exchange, his king is going to have to come back and take this pawn and then get out of the way before this pawn can queen. So I'm, I'm actually a couple moves faster than that pawn. So, uh, so I'm still winning the race even though I lost a tempo. But let's continue on and I'll show you the reason why tempos matter. Queen here, king there. I said uh, during the game <clears throat> that it, it didn't matter even if his pawn was uh, one step closer, um, I could still win. But there is a famous draw with the, uh, with the bishop pawn versus the king and the queen. Um, to get there, his king would have to go to this square. So let's look at this as a new variation. And if I waste a move, and allow him to push that pawn forward. Of course, I didn't have to do that. But So if I had, was down one more tempo, this position is now a draw. And uh, I'll show you why. I come in and check. And he uh, goes there. I check. He goes here. I check. And uh, he doesn't want to uh, go in front of the pawn and allow me to bring my king over. So I want to attack this pawn and force him to defend it. And so here, this check, just when um, I think I'm forcing him in front of the pawn so I can bring my king over to help uh, assist with uh, taking that pawn and checkmating him, uh, he pulls the move <laughs> king to h1. And now this is a draw because uh, my king is too far away. And my queen takes the pawn that eliminates all these squares. And uh, so that's a stalemate. So just a few moves uh, difference between... Uh, success and failure. There was one tempo I gave away, and if I lost one more tempo along the way, then, then suddenly it was to be a draw. But as it is, this position is a, a fairly easy win. He went this way. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. And the winning technique is just to check with the queen. Uh, of course, if you can get your queen in front of the pawn, that's the easiest win, because then you can just sit there and then bring your king up to take the pawn. But uh, if he defends correctly, uh, you can still force his king in front of the pawn by checking. And uh, every time he brings his uh, king in front of the pawn, then it's uh, then you can bring your king one step closer. So now there's a uh, mate in about three or four here. Um, if you look at this, uh, and one thing you have to be careful of is not to create a stalemate, but uh, my pieces control all of these squares, so his king only has one move. He goes there. Um, and you bring the king up this way. And now he has a couple moves. He can move his king here, but that is checkmate. So you don't want to do that. And um, his only other move is to move the pawn. And what you can do here is bring the queen forward to threaten to take the pawn and checkmate. You still leave the king with one move. He goes there, and then uh, this is going to be check and mate. So uh, no way out for the, the poor black king. He's trapped there. So my opponent resigned at that point, back back at this point here. Um, 
So interesting game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave any comments you have in the section below and I will see you again soon. Bye.